Hello, I'm John Long, State Coordinator for the 4-H Shooting Sports Program. Many of you know the State Invitational is a senior-only event which we offer from ages 14 to 18 to those who have qualified from their district matches. Today I want to take an opportunity to go over the State Invitational Rulebook. The State Invitational Rulebook is a separate document from the Event Handbook. The event handbook is a document that reviews the general rules and overall rules that encompass the 4-H shooting sports program. The state invitational rulebook is an event specific rulebook. It covers all disciplines involved in the state invitational and breaks each one down just like in the event handbook with slightly different courses of fire. I'm going to go now and we'll go through each of the uh, different disciplines. I'll try to review each one and note specific changes or items of specific interest to you that you will find helpful in preparation for the state invitational. We'll begin by looking at the state invitational special notices. These special notices are, in, are located on page three of the state invitational rule book. I want to talk about a couple of very uh, specific points on the special notices. As it says in the beginning line, the following rules are for the 2016 4-H shooting sports invitational only and are subject to change due to range availability and range restrictions. The state in invitational is a senior only event as I indicated earlier and these rules do not apply to the district events. The first thing we're going to look at is the review period. The review period states that there will be a review period on all scores for this event. Scores will be posted at the end of the competition. A 30 minute review period will follow which during each event participants may request a formal review. Now, event. An event is something we will talk about later. but. Each of the disciplines has a, an event associated with that. So that'll, that is what we're referring to when we say event. Targets will be rescored by a three-person committee and will not be returned to the competitors. The review fee is $50, which will be returned to the participant if a scoring error is found. One of the things that I want to emphasize here on the review period is that the review period must be requested by the participant. The participant is the 4 h -er, not a coach or parent. It is the participant's responsibility to request a formal review. They are to uh, give the $50 review fee and the money will be returned to them if a scoring error is found. That is if a scoring error is found. If, the scoring, if a scoring error is not found then the $50 will be retained into the registration um, fee collection box.
Huh? Probably going to tell me that. Next thing I want to talk about is the next bullet, which is once record shooting begins, no coaching is permitted unless initiated by the shooter through the range officer and with his or her permission. The next thing is no cell phones will be allowed on the firing line during live fire. This includes use of cell phones by parents, coaches, and participants, which excludes range officers. This brings up a point of photographic review of your targets. Cell phone pictures are not considered admissible evidence of a scoring error. You must go back to the review period and do a formal challenge. So those uh, cell phone pictures of each individual target will not be admissible. Participants are required to have completed eight hours of 4-H shooting sports training each year in each discipline in which they compete. This rule applies to all disciplines, including the hunting sports discipline. Hunting has two shooting events, archery and 22 rifle. Each participant is to have eight hours of safety training in each of those disciplines. Participants in the state invitational must also complete two hours of safety and rules instruction in the discipline in which they are going to compete. This is, very, this is the same instruction that one receives during the shooting sports year, but the two additional hours that are required here must be signed off by an instructor in that discipline and Participants must present their documentation to the appropriate agent before they register for the state invitational. The two additional safety hours that we talk about here are to assist the participant in knowing the rules and the courses of fire. The state invitational has different courses of fire and different requirements than some of the events in the districts. A lot of times participants will come to this state invitational and are not properly prepared for the courses of fire presented. These two additional safety hours and rule instruction are an effort to reduce that occurrence. Now I would like to switch gears just for a moment and talk about the registration process and some documents that we will need to look at before we go into further into the uh, rule book itself. The state invitational is held on the same two days, this year being July 8th and 9th. 
You can find more information on daily events and the agenda located on the 4-H Shooting Sports website on msucares.com. One of the documents that is required for each participant at Camp Bonacci will be this waiver. This waiver is for archery and shotgun participants only. This waiver is required before any participation uh, can be held and it will be turned in at the registration desk. I will send these forms out prior to so you can have those filled out when you get to the registration desk. It will save time and will expedite your registration process. The other document is a Mississippi State University document and it also goes hand in hand with the Camp Bonacci agreement. Both of these documents have been reviewed by a university council and are part of the registration process as I indicated earlier. This goes hand in hand again with Camp Bonacci and will be made available as well prior to the event so you can have it filled out and signed and bring it to the registration desk as well. And in the advent that you forget your forms, we will have extra available at the registration table. Also a note is to make sure that you have a code of conduct and a help form that you will get from your uh, 4-H or extension agent in the county office. These forms should be filled out event specific for the state invitational with the appropriate dates. There is a uh, formal rules committee that will be in place at each of the two locations. The rules committee consists of at least three of five individuals. One would be the range officer in charge uh, of the range in question, event coordinator or state executive board member, state 4-H staff member, state shooting sports coordinator, or other predetermined state staff on site, level 2 or level 3 instructor for discipline, discipline in question, research and extension center head or regional extension coordinator on site. It's important to note that the extension agent with shooting sports responsibility from the county in question may be present during the rules committee meeting in order to disseminate information to the 4-H member or family, but may not have a voice or vote on the rules committee. I want to take just a second to explain the difference between words challenges and protests. A lot of times we have individuals say that they would like to protest their score. This is not correct. A protest is not to challenge a score. A challenge is to challenge a score. Once again, that's done by the participant and not a parent or coach. Participants and coaches are responsible for reading and understanding the rules. It is important for the participant, it's important for the, in the coach to know exactly what the rules state 
before, before they come to the competition. It's only fair to the participant that you know exactly what to expect before you get to the competition in order for them to be as prepared and to enjoy the event as much as possible. National team selection. National team selection is a question that comes up quite often and I'd like to try to clarify that at this time. The national team selection is made based on the results from the state invitational. The top four individuals from each of the events that meet specific qualifications will be first invited to participate as a national team member. One of the requirements from the participant would be that they have not competed in a previous national competition in the discipline in which they qualified. For example, someone who has previously participate, participated in archery at a national event before H could not compete in archery again. Another requirement is that the individual be 18 and not any older than 18 as of January 1 in which the national championship is held. Because the state invitational is held in July, this is after the national event. Therefore, participants have a year to prepare for the national event. However, if a child qualifies at the state invitational and turns 19 prior to January 1 of the following year, they would not be eligible to participate as a national team member. However, if a team member turns 19 after January 1, they are still el eligible to be a potential national team member. One of the parts of the registration program in which the state invitational is composed of has as part of their regist registration it would automatically calculate their age based on the coming year. So we have a list automatically of those that will meet that age requirement and those that who, that do not. We're going to go now into a review of each of the disciplines that are offered at the State Invitational. I'm going to review each of those disciplines as well as highlight some of the specifics within that discipline. Before we start to talk about disciplines, I want to remind and make a note of the fact that when we speak of equipment regulations and requirements, those will be checked at the state invitational at your individual range prior to participation. I want you to keep that in mind. Sometimes there are participants that come to the event, they have been checked in at the district event and the equipment that they have for the state invitational is not adequate.
one of the reasons that the state invitational is different than our district events is to give a example of what nationals is like. Each of the events, with the exception of silhouettes in the air and small bore categories, are a simulation of what you will see at nationals. This also is a portion of youth development to where it makes the events a little more challenging than previous events. One of the similarities that you'll see within each of the disciplines is that each event, this being an event, for instance, the Joad feed around has an NGB or national governing body associated with it. The national govern bo governing body incorporates all rules not 4-H related. For instance, FIDA may say that there is a different draw weight for compound bows. This is a 4-H rule where we have a 60-pound maximum draw weight. All 4-H rules supersede that of the national governing body. We've had at times before, one in particular being the CMP event, where a gentleman says, said that we were not running the range in accordance to CMP rules. We reminded him of the uh, force of fire is related to 4-H and that the exceptions to that CMP round were located within the 4-H rules. So if something is not spelled out specifically, you can go to the national governing body to find out more answers. But if it's specifically indicated within the rules, then that would be considered a 4-H rule. When we look, for instance, within the archery event, we have the match equipment standard. One is for recurve. One is for compound. Recurve incorporates anything from long bows or some uh, primitive bow including recurve. And compound would be anything with uh, wheels and such as that. Again, we go back to 60 pounds draw weight. Each bow will be checked with a scale along with the six grains hour arrow weight per pound or bow peak draw weight. Also, no arrows 23 64ths of an inch in diameter or larger are permitted. These may or may not have been checked some of the specifics may or may not have been checked previously and we have had individuals come to the event with weight and arrows not allowable within the state invitational rules. We do however allow participants to have an opportunity to correct any inappropriate or uh, inadequate equipment prior to the event within reason. Joad feeder round is the round which consists of the large round bale targets. These are typically what you will see with a five color face 
It is a large 122 centimeter face. There are distances of 60, 50, 40, and 30 meters. Two ends of six arrows each from 60, 50, 40, and 30 meters with five minutes per six arrow end. An end would be six arrows. Those arrows would then be scored and pulled and then you would shoot another end for the total course and then for each of those distances. Got something in my pocket. You pick them up. Pick them up. Well. And, oh, wait a minute. I see what it is. One dot. Yeah. The next event we'll talk about within the archery discipline is the field round. The field round consists of square bail targets, similar to what you would see within a just practice scenario at home or within your club, yet they have uh, paper targets which are National Field Archery Association sizes. Those sizes relate to the distance in which the arrows are shot. Those distances are marked on the stake at each station. Those distances range from 5 to 80 yards. Sometimes we've had questions. Are we really going to shoot 80 yards? My response is, what does the rule book say? It says within the range of 5 to 80 yards. So the correct answer is maybe. So you need to prepare for each of those distances anywhere from 5 to 80 yards. The course of fire is 15 targets with two arrows per target. One of the things that we want to make sure we do with archery because of the size of the discipline is to make sure that we're not unnecessarily moving slower than we need to. So we need to make sure that we're moving through the course expeditiously. Those targets are scored 5, 4, and 3 from the center outward on the field ranges. And again, the national governing body is the National Field Archery Association. The final event within archery would be the 3D round. 3D round, uh, the 3D round consists of artificial animal targets and those will be 15 targets with one arrow per target. Again, shooting the course expeditiously without being rushed just in order to avoid delays. This is an unmarked distance from 5 to 50 yards. Lost arrow search is limited to 2 minutes. Scoring is IBO scoring without center X's. A center shot will earn a score of 10. 
The next scoring ring will count as eight. And any arrow outside the second scoring ring, but only animal will count as five. A shot that completely misses the target will count as zero. Event shoot-offs. This is for event-specific shoot-offs. Ties for first, second, and third place will be broken for individual events based on the NGBs for that event, going back to the national governing body. Each governing body has a specific shoot-off. Overall, however, overall shoot-offs will be used in order to break an overall tie. There will be seven 3D targets at un unknown distance, seven field targets at a known distance, and two ends of three arrows from the 60 meter line during the FIDA event. However, if a tie still exists after this procedure, which we have seen in the past, a final shoot-off procedure will be determined by the chief range officer and event coordinator. The next event we'll talk about will be the muzzle loading rifle event. The rules that are listed below apply to both the 50 yard event and the 25 yard balls and critters. One of the things that I want to point out here and is different than last year would be this statement here. No open containers of, of powder are permitted on the firing line or loading benches of any range. Any open container will become the property of the range officer. A separate powder measure must be used to carry the powder from the container to the muzzle of the gun. No rifle may be capped or primed until on the firing line and the command to fire has been given by the range officer. Capper will be on the firing line only. The shooter may cap. Capper is kept in a safe location between loading table and firing line and the location to be determined by the range officer. This statement is to obviously avoid any type of accident regarding powder during the loading procedure. Two events within the muzzle loading rifle are the 25 yard bottle and Hafner combination. Some people call it the bottle and critters. and the 50-yard bullseye. Lead conical bullets or patch round balls are the projectiles that are allowed. No sabots or sabots are permitted. Next, we look at the 22 rifle event. The 22 rifle event consists of a sporter rifle match and the NRA three position match. This are, this is, are the, these are the requirements for the sporter rifle match. 
It consists of a B-19 target from the distances of 25 yards and 50 yards. The course of fire indicated here. The time limit here. The ammunition here. And the equipment specifications here. It's important to point out that during the state invitational, hollow point ammunition is not allowed. Magnums are also not allowed. During this event, thumb hole stocks are not permitted. Also during this event, polluted barrels are not permitted. The overall weight of the rifle, including sights and sling, may not exceed 8.5 pounds. Any type of action, semi-automatic or manually operated with a trigger pull of at least 3 pounds may be used. Emphasis on trigger pull must be of at least 3 pounds. The weight of the rifle along with the weight of the trigger pull will be checked at the equipment check station on the individual ranges. Sights consist of open sights, aperture sights, or optical sights not exceeding six power. Variable scopes may be used but must be taped and immobilized at the six power setting. The NRA three position event has a different target. This is the A51 target. Force of fire consists of 20 shots each for each position at 50 yards, yards for a record 60 shots. The time limit for this course of fire is indicated here with the equipment specifications being here. You will note on this event that there are no restrictions placed on barrel length or overall weight of the rifle and accessory. Thumb hole stocks are, not, are, are permitted in this event. The trigger pull must be at least three pounds in order to be used. The sights for this event will be open or aperture sights only. No optical sights will be allowed. Again, hollow point ammunition is not allowed at the state invitational, as well as magnums. In regards to ammunition, no ammunition may be contained within the case of the gun. We've had in the past where individuals will show up at gun check, equipment check, with rounds under the foam padding of the case or within the case itself. Those individuals have not been allowed to compete that day in that event. However, they are given the opportunity to come back the next day to shoot the next event. Once equipment is checked for the state invitational, it will have an inspection sticker placed on that gun. There is no more equipment check once the initial check has been made.
air rifle events are like the 22 events in the fact that they are broken down based on target, based on distance, based on course of fire, time limit, and what is permissible for the range. Trigger pull must be at least 1.5 pounds. Sights, metallic sights only. And your definition of what a metallic sight is follows. Clothing. Shoes must be soft, low-cut, athletic, or street shoes that do not extend above the ankle. No boots are permitted. A shooting glove may be worn, but no shooting jackets are permitted. Up to two sweatshirts or clothing suitable for the weather is allowed. A pin or button may be used as a sling keeper in the prone or kneeling positions. This event is the CMP event and can be found under the most recent printing of the 3MP, uh, 3P CMP rule. Sporter air rifle standing is the other event that's located within the air rifle event. And I won't spend any more time on that course of fire as you can read it's broken down the same way the AR 510 target is still used in this event as well the 22 pistol matches or match has two events and the first thing I want to point out here is the statement at the top of the page and it says all pistol shooters younger than 17 must have in their possession a written statement from their parent or guardian guardian granting them permission to possess and fire pistols in compliance with the Bureau of Alcohol Tobacco and Firearm Regulations we suggest a simple statement shrunken to card size the statement should include the name of the shooter, the name and address of the parent or guardian, the signature of the parent or guardian, the signature of a witness, and the date it was signed. Some shooters laminate the permission card and keep it in the shooting kit. All matches are single pistol matches. A shooter is to shoot the entire course of, the, of fire of that event with the same pistol. No pistol changes between stages of an individual match are permitted. Something of importance here is that day one scores will be held until the next day of the event and posted at designated time and places on, as indicated on the range. This posting and challenge period will be advertised on each range the first day of the event. This is the small bore camp parry round. There's one event. It's important to note here that no single action revolvers are allowed. Also, no hollow point ammunition is allowed. Both events in 22 pistol use the B8 target. Each of those courses of fire are listed within the 
rule book itself. So I won't spend any time going through each section of those. Our pistol event uses flat nose ammo only. So no pointed or any other type of ammunition permitted. So it's flat nose ammunition only. The target for this event is a B44. Four bullseye B40 target. Again, for air pistol, weigh, uh, trigger pull of laying, weighing less than 3.3 pounds, and the trigger must be capable of, of sorry, air pistol weighing le at least, I'm sorry, change that. The equipment required for air pistol events be any 177 caliber air pistol weighing less than 3.3 pounds and capable of lifting 1.8 pounds when cocked. Pellets must be single loaded. Timed fire uses the same target and timed fire consists on command five seconds per shot. Time will be provided to load pistols safely between shots and there will be five seconds between commence fire and cease fire. The shooting position is one hand, one hand hold standing and the same specifications go for the equipment regulations on this as it did in the other air pistol event. Now we move to the shotgun events. Shotgun events are much different at state invitational than they are at your district and county events. There are three events, skeet, trap, sporting clays, or five stand, depending on the availability of the range and equipment. All ranges will be closed to competitors the night before the match. Competitors will be placed in the squads. And those squads can be sent in to Lynette Crocker, the extension agent in Wayne County. If you want to be pre-squatted, you'll need to send her an email with your squad. I've sent this information out previously on emails, and I will do uh, it again as a reminder as well. If you do not send her a squad or to, uh, to her, you will be squatted uh, randomly. Ammunition must be 50, uh, must be 1,300 feet per second or less, and reloaded ammunition is not permitted. No tracker style ammo is allowed, and no release triggers are permitted. Tiebreakers for each event will consist of those that, as the NGB dictates. However, an overall tiebreaker 
will be done to establish the top 16 individuals at state invitational. The tiebreaker will consist of 10 targets. 10 targets for each event that is conducted during the state invitational. Skeet will be one pair from stations 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6 for a total of 10 targets. Prep would be five targets from stations 1 and 5 for 10 targets. And Sporting Clays would be five pairs from station by Chief Range Officer and Event Coordinator. It is important to note here when we talk of sporting clays, based on where the event is held, Camp Bonacci does have the avail availability to, to do sporting clays. However, if we were at another location, we would, we would refer, if we did not have the ability to perform sporting clays, we would try to do, let's, let's knock that out. I don't want to talk about that. Just say, yeah, we'll edit that because I don't want to talk about that. That'd be more confusing. We'll start back with the overall tiebreaker. There's an overall tiebreaker for the event for the overall events. An overall tiebreaker tie will be done to establish the top 16 individuals at State Invitational. The tiebreaker will consist of 10 targets for each event that is conducted during the State Invitational. Skeet will consist of one pair from stations 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6 for a total of 10 targets. Trap will be five targets from stations 1 and 5 for 10 targets. Ford and Clays will be five pairs from station determined by the Chief Range Officer and Event Coordinator. Many times we have participants arrive at the state invitational who have never shot any of the events that we have in shotgun, skeet trap, and sporting clay. It's important that your participant be as prepared as possible for the event, and as we stated earlier, those two hours of instruction, additional instruction, should be an adequate amount of time to familiarize them with the shotgun events, those being skeet, trap, and sporting clays. Each of the discipline or each of the events are broken down as to how it will take place, again, just like any of the other ones. It is American Skeet. Let's start with Skeet. It'll be two rounds of 25 targets. How the shoot-offs are conducted, the time limit, the equipment that is required, and the tiebreaker. Time limit is established in order to make sure that the event is moving at a scheduled pace. One thing that slows down uh, a shotgun event very quickly will be a familiar that is unfamiliar with the course of fire. So make sure that your participant knows the course of fire for each of those events. Those participating in the shotgun event will have additional information in an effort to try and prepare them for those events. And I'll make those available through email. Trap is two rounds of 25. I'm scratch that. Remember, it's important that the events, as in the number of targets, 
or those events that are offered may change due to range availability, weather, and things of that nature. Sporting clays will be offered at the Camp Bonacci range unless some event occurs that we can't offer it, but at this time sporting clays will be offered. As in with any of the other events, the management determines the sporting clays course. The course of fire is flexible depending on the capabilities of the facility and can include up to 50 sporting clay targets. The final event that we're going to talk about is the hunting discipline. This is a relatively new discipline that we've had over just the past few years. And it is uh, definitely something that we're excited about. On the hunting events, participants must receive eight hours of discipline-specific safety instruction in each live fire discipline represented in the hunting contest. This is the statement that I made earlier in regards to the hunting discipline. An instructor certified in the disciplines must sign the certification form and the form must be presented to the extension agent before the participant may register for the state invitational. Those without completed certification forms will not be eligible to participate in the hunting discipline. A participant must compete in all events in the hunting discipline to receive a total score to be used for consideration in advancing to national. Shooting scores are 25% of the total score. The two shooting disciplines that we will talk about in the hunting discipline will be the 22 rifle. The 22 rifle consists of an NRA sized squirrel at 25 yards, an NRA red fox at 35 yards, and an NRA white tailed deer at 50 yards. There are 15 shots total, five per target, one minute per shot. The squirrel will be shot from a standing position, the red fox will be shot from a kneeling position, and the white-tailed deer will be shot from a prone position. The 22 rifle must be a sporter rifle with a hunting style stock or sporter barrel. Maximum weight of the rifle, including sights, is eight pounds. And a rifle must have safe hunting triggers capable of holding at least two pounds, two, uh, two and a half pounds. Rifles must have a safe hunting trigger capable of at least 2.5 pounds. A hunting style sling no more than one and a half inches wide is permitted. All small bore rifles are required to have an empty chamber indicator or have the bolt removed and action open when the gun is not being fired. Scopes may be no greater than six power. If variable scopes are used, they must be taped by the range officer before the beginning of the event at no greater than six power. Range finder reticles are not permitted. Ammunition will be standard velocity 22 long rifle ammunition or high velocity 22 long rifle am ammunition. No hyper velocity rounds are permitted. Scoring is indicated below with each hit in vital area being one point out of 15 possible points. 
day one scores will be held until the next day of the event and posted at, posted at a designated time and place. These posting and challenge periods will be advertised on each range the first on each range the first day of the event. The next next shooting discipline in hunting is archery. All of these will be shot at camp. The archery discipline will be shot at Camp Bonacci. Those will be of unmarked distances with a maximum distance being 50 yards for compound bows and a maximum distance for recurves being 35. There will be 15 of the 3D targets. This will be the same range that the other archery uh, participants are in. We'll be using the bow should be suitable for hunting, so therefore no crossbows are allowed. Gall must be no more than 60 pounds, and only suitable arrows tipped with field points are permitted. Hunting sights that are fixed with no more than four sighting pins that neither magnify nor project an image on the target are permitted. Stabilizers may be no longer than 12 inches. We're using IBO scoring. with an eight ring being the vital hit and the vital hit being one point. Again, day one scores will be held until the next day. It will be a compass course with compass course which consists of a polygon with a record bearing five points to the waypoint and a pace count being five points to the waypoint. Wildlife identification is the next event and this includes wildlife identification and management, wildlife management techniques or problems. Participants will be asked to identify specimens or parts of specimens which may include skulls, skins, wings, single feathers, antlers, horns, tracks, scat, or any other sign. Correct identification is one point. Information consists of the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fishers, and Parks Wildlife Topic Guide and the NRA Hunter's Manual. There will only be species offered that are found in Mississippi. The final part of the hunting discipline is also a written exam consisting of various questions relating to that discipline. Some final notes within the state invitational rule book are target, target examples which can be found in the back. Each one is labeled and relate to those disciplines. For example, this is the bottle targets that will be found in the muzzleloader discipline. This is an example of the bottles and critters combination in muzzleloader. Here's an example of the B-19 and A-51s that are found within the 22 rifle. These continue on through the document and cover each of the disciplines. This document is a publication of Mississippi State University Extension and has a publication number of 2751. If you'd like a copy of this document, you can go to your local Extension office and ask the Extension agent there for a copy. 
I also put a copy on the website. All right. Can, yeah, can we go, like, before we go back to me, can we go to the website? Just minimize and... Me talking. No sound on the website. I wanted to take just a minute to show you how to get to the shooting sports page on the MSU Cares website. First, go to HTTP colon forward slash, forward slash, extension dot msstate dot edu. This will bring you to the main page. To get to the 4-H shooting sports page, you will go to the 4-H drop down menu. You will go to the 4-H safety programs drop down menu and click on shooting sports. Here you'll find all information as it relates to our state invitational event. State invitational rule book, the tentative agenda, and where each of the events will be held. Also maps and addresses located on how to get to each of the facilities. I hope you found that this information useful. One thing I would like to point out is if you have any questions, those questions are best asked prior to the event. One of the things you don't want to do is to assume that something is a certain way only to get to the range and find out that it is not. It's not fair to you and it's especially not fair to the participant. So make sure that you read and understand all rules contained within the State Invitational Rule Book. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at john.long at msstate.edu. Thank you.